I spent 200 days in Minecraft as a shapeshifter. Previously, I crafted a shapeshifter wand that let me transform into powerful mobs and gain their abilities. But today, villager wizards have appeared in my world and they're offering to trade rare items called shapeshifter stones. When each of these stones are combined with my wand, I unlock a group of elemental shapeshifts with crazy abilities that will help me survive for 200 days. Can I defeat the bosses of all four stones and complete my shapeshifter wand? Stay tuned to find and out. So, the journey continues. I loaded the world, and I was back in my base as an orangutan. I then turned towards my door and saw that somebody was waiting outside. They kind of looked like a wizard. Hello. If you're looking to upgrade your shapeshifter wand, travel past the mansion to the wizard tower, where I shall be waiting for you. However, beware of archers hidden in the forest on your journey there. Before I even had a chance to reply, the wizard ran off into the dark oak forest. So I decided to follow him. I used my orangutan ability to jump up the hill, then turned into a shark and begun swimming through the lake. But then, two archers emerged from the trees. They began shooting arrows at me, but because my shapeshift was strong, I took them out pretty easily. I picked up the items they dropped, used my trident to travel to the end of the lake, and in the distance, I could finally see the wizard tower. This place was massive, and definitely wasn't here before. At the bottom, it had a double chest with bread, emeralds, and a saddle, and I also collected all of the hay bales to trade with villagers later on. Then, I ran up the staircase, and when I reached the top, the wizard was waiting for me. Ah, I see you made it. I would like to offer an upgrade to your shapeshifter one. Interesting. What does this upgrade do? By trading with the other wizards in this tower, you can obtain elemental stones. When these are combined with your wand, they unlock a huge amount of powerful shapeshifts. That sounds pretty good to me. Are there any conditions? However, there are some conditions. If you wish to upgrade your wand, you will have to slay powerful beasts, and you may only take seven of your current shapeshifts with you. Choose wisely. Okay, well, before I pick my shapeshifts and upgrade the wand, let's speak to the other wizards. This guy must be the forest wizard, so to get the forest stone, I need 64 of every type of crop, 256 ancient oak logs, and a forest orb. What is that? The forest orb is obtained by killing the evil archers who roam the forest around here. They all have a small chance to draw pieces of the pillager totem, and when all three pieces are placed, the pillager boss will spawn. Defeat him, and you will get the orb that is needed for these brand new shapeshifts. The tiger, gorilla, red panda, elephant, ocelot, and wheat golem. So, I decided it was time to pick the seven shapeshifts that I was going to keep. But while I was scrolling through them, the wizard threw me a map and it contained today's sponsor, Monster Legends. Monster Legends is a free-to-play game for both Android and iOS, where you can collect monsters, level them up, and build a world full of different habitats for them to live in. Each monster has six different rarities, which progressively become stronger, and the monsters also have their own elements, like fire, water, earth, thunder, and even more. You can also breed monsters to create rare new species, and there are over 800 of them to discover. I wonder what happens if you breed a water and fire monster you can even find YouTubers in Monster Legends like Dream, Mr. Beast, Jacksepticeye, and more. If you're a competitive player like myself, you can also fight against other monsters on the adventure map, explore the dungeons, and even fight in real time with or against your friends. There are also weekly events where you can discover and play through new adventures, so if you haven't already, you should definitely download Monster Legends. Using the link in the description, you'll receive a special reward containing 50,000 food, 300,000 gold, 10 gems, and the epic monster Kaori. Thank you to Monster Legends for sponsoring this video, and yeah, let's continue. I had to make sure that these would not only be strong enough to fight powerful bosses, but also useful for collecting the items that I need for each stone. So here's what I decided on. Firstly, the Warden. Its abilities give extra reach and attack damage. Next was the Shark, which gives extra damage and speed underwater. My third choice was a Creeper, which lets me explode and eat gunpowder. Number four was the Strider, which lets me walk on lava and gain speed on lava. Number five was the Red Fungus, which lets me grow plants using my hunger bars and gain hunger and sunlight. Number six was the toad, which gives me the luck effect, lets me leap like a frog, and also take no fall damage. And lastly, the orangutan, which lets me swing from blocks like a monkey, but I can only eat vegetables. And so, the quest for the forest stone begun. The first item that I needed was the wand upgrade table, so that I could combine the four elemental stones with my shapeshifter wand. The wizard was trading this for 128 oak logs and eight iron blocks, so I started breaking trees. 
But then, out of nowhere, I was attacked by some archers, and using my warden shapeshift, I took them out. I then collected the rest of my logs and started on the iron blocks. Luckily, while I was looking around for a cave, I heard skeletons below me, so I dug straight down and found one. I killed the nearby mobs and began mining all of the iron that I saw. Then I decided to change my shapeshift into a creeper so that mobs weren't hostile towards me. This came in very useful when I found a skeleton spawner, since I could loot the chests without them attacking. After mining even more iron, I finally had the materials I needed, so I headed back to the wizard tower, smelted all of my iron, and traded for the upgrade table. The next item that I needed was the forest stone, which requires 64 of every crop, 256 ancient oak logs, and finally, the forest orb. So I started with the ancient oak logs, since there was a dark oak forest right next to the village. This took quite a while, but eventually, after breaking two massive trees, I had all 256 ancient oak logs. Next, I went into the village and looked for beetroot plants. These were kind of hard to spot, but I used my red fungus shapeshift to grow the plants until I found some. But when I broke it, a villager nabbed my seeds, so I couldn't even grow any more. Put it back. Luckily, I found some more later though, so this time, Time, I made sure to do the farming by the base so that the villagers wouldn't steal from me. When I got back, I collected my carrots and potatoes from the farm, grabbed wheat from my storage, then farmed beetroot using my shapeshift ability and bone meal. Once I collected all of my materials, it was finally time to summon the pillager boss. The evil archers in the woods have a very small chance to drop a piece of the totem, and ravagers are guaranteed to drop a piece of the totem, so I was considering completing a raid. I began by fighting archers and decided to switch between the orangutan and the warden shapeshift since the grappling hook lets me move around really fast, and the warden does tons of damage. After fighting for a couple of days, I found an archer with a banner on its head, and this actually dropped my first totem piece, the totem base. However, killing this archer gave me the bad omen effect, so I was kind of reluctant to go into the nearby village. But eventually while fighting, I stepped slightly too close and triggered a raid. The first round had archers, which I took out pretty quickly, but then pillagers started appearing as well, so I decided to shapeshift into the warden, then I took out a ton of pillagers and ended up getting two more totem bases which was kind of unlucky. Eventually a Ravager appeared, and using my insane reach as the Warden, I took it out pretty easily, and luckily, it dropped the top totem piece, so all I needed now was the middle. On the final round of the raid, another Ravager appeared, and to make this even worse, my hunger was low, which made me blind because of my shapeshift abilities. I could also only eat meat, so I had to take it out right now since I couldn't regenerate. And after a ton of hits, I finally killed it and got the last totem piece, so I could finally summon the boss. I got to a nice open area, placed all all three pieces down, and particles began appearing. Then after a couple of seconds, the pillager boss was summoned. This guy was immune to arrows and could fire wither skulls using his staff. I used my creeper explosions to deal extra damage to him, and luckily, since this is the least powerful of the four bosses, my gear was holding up pretty well. I dodged most of the wither skulls through the shooting and got some really good crits with my netherite sword. Then eventually, I got the low ground and finished him off. He dropped two enchanted gold ingots, which I could use later, but most importantly, the forest orb. I now have I had every item that I needed for the forest orb trade, so I ran back to the wizard tower and traded all of the items that I collected for the forest stone. Next, I placed the upgrade table and combined the stone with my wand, and now I had unlocked all of the forest shapeshifts. These include the gorilla, which can throw bananas and swing from blocks. Next is the tiger, which has no attack cooldown, increased jump height, and a dash ability. Third is the straw golem, which lets me infinitely grow crops. Fourth is the bee, which lets me float and sting enemies. Fifth is the elephant, which lets me charge at enemies and has insane health. Sixth is the red panda, which lets me eat bamboo for extra hearts and has increased running speed. And lastly, the ocelot, which lets me scare creepers and buffs fish. So, I tested my brand new shapeshifts by turning into a gorilla and used my ability to throw some bananas out of the tower. I then spoke to the ocean wizard and decided that this was the next stone that I was going to collect. It requires 64 cod and salmon, 16 pufferfish and tropical fish, as well as 8 nautilus shells and the ocean orb. How do I get that, ex story? I mean, the ocean wizard? The ocean orb is obtained by killing the kraken, a giant sea monster that can be found lurking near shipwrecks. Defeated to obtain the orb that is needed for the sea dragon, orca, tortoise, platypus, seal, and blobfish shapeshifts. So, the journey for the ocean orb begun. I floated to the bottom of the tower using my new bee shapeshift, then used the gorilla's banana ability to kill some creepers in the forest near my house. When I got back, I decided that it was time to make some upgrades to my base, because I wanted three different floors. First, I broke a ton of trees so that I had enough oak and spruce logs, and then started building.
And guys, while I build, I have an important message. Our last video has 10 million views and 90% of those are from people who aren't subscribed. So if that includes you, if even 5% of you guys did subscribe, we would get to 2 million instantly. So you guys should just do it right now. It's free and you guys get to see even more crazy videos like these. Anyway, back to watching a monkey build a house. Now the staircase and back area were complete, I decided to make my underground enchanting rooms. I wanted to make it look kind of like an elevator shaft and it turned out pretty well. One was a regular enchanting room and had enough bookshelves for level 30, and to build the other room, I needed some blocks from the nether, so I took a trip to a close by bastion and grabbed a ton of blackstone, and then built my cursed enchanting room. In my mod pack, I could get a block called an altar which lets me curse my items to increase the level of any enchant by 1. This means I can get insanely useful enchants like fortune 4 or sharpness 6, but they also get random curses which I'll explain later. And finally, the build was complete. I'm definitely not the best builder out there, but I think this base looks pretty cool. There was one block that I still needed for my house to be complete, the cursed enchantment table. And to get one, I was going to have to find another woodland mansion. So I headed back into the dark oak forest and eventually found a modified swamp biome which looked really cool. I took out an archer and eventually stumbled across something called a sunken ruin and it was filled with witches. I found a chest inside one of the huts that contained some basic brewing items as well as something called bottles of lightning. If I needed charged creepers for some reason, I guess I could now. In the next chest, I I found a witch's hat, so I transformed back into a human and tried it on. Then I found a new dark oak forest biome and almost immediately I found a second woodland mansion. After getting a closer look, I saw an evoker through one of the windows and since a totem would be quite useful, I broke in and took it down. This mansion was far more dangerous than the first, but eventually I took out all of the nearby pillagers. Then in a nearby room, I noticed an obsidian platform and realized that I had found the altar, the exact block that I came here for. Before leaving, I decided to explore the basement for some extra loot, and managed to find some materials in a chest called crude cladding. This is used to reinforce leather armor and make it insanely strong, so I took some with me. Eventually, I found the adjudicator boss room. This fight brought me to half a heart in the first 100 days of this world, but this time, I had very powerful shapeshifts, so I was confident that I could kill him. I began attacking as aggressively as I could and stripped away over half of its health. The adjudicator then summoned a ravager, which I just about managed to kill. I then dealt the final blows and claimed my enchanted totem. It was a lot faster using the tiger shapeshift. I looted the final basement rooms and found some extra materials, as well as some cladded armor, then left the mansion, jumped into the nearest ocean, transformed into a shark, and started heading back to my base. I swam for a few minutes before eventually noticing a boss bar at the top of my screen. Somehow, I had accidentally ran into the kraken boss, so I cautiously swam further forward. Eventually, I found a terrifying sea monster with razor sharp teeth. I took I took it out as quickly as I could, but the boss bar didn't disappear, which meant that that wasn't the Kraken. I turned to my right, and in the distance, I saw the real Kraken, and it was terrifying. I tried attacking it, but immediately, I was thrown into the air, and my hearts were stripped away. I decided that I was going to have to get some better gear and enchants using my altar before fighting this thing properly, so I noted down its location and headed back to my base. On my trip back, I found a shipwreck which I looted for some extra food, and then noticed a lighthouse on the shore. Inside of it, there were mob spawners and dungeon chests, so I climbed to the top, breaking all of the spawners that I saw along the way. And at the very top, I found a treasure map which led to a spot very nearby, and this gave me some extra emeralds, food, and diamonds. And after some more traveling, I finally got back to my base and decided that now would be a good time to upgrade my gear. I started by placing the altar into my cursed enchanting room, repaired my boots and leggings, then put protection 4 on my helmet and boots, and lastly, enchanted 3 fishing rods that I would combine later. And now, it was finally time Time to begin the cursed enchanting. As a recap, this upgrades a random enchantment on my item by one level, but it also adds a random curse. So I started with my netherite sword, which was quite risky, and luckily I got looting 4 which was really good. And the curse that I got does slightly lower my attack speed, but because I had the tiger shapeshift, it was fine. Next, I cursed my pickaxe, and I was hoping for fortune 4, and I actually got it, as well as curse of vanishing which isn't actually that bad, since this world has hardcore rules anyway. On my boots and leggings, 
things, I got Unbreaking 4 as my upgrade. And the two curses that I got really weren't a big deal. On my chest plate, I got Protection 5, which is really good. And I also got it on my helmet, so it was safe to say that I was pretty stacked. Lastly, I got Unbreaking 4 on my axe, and then combined all of the fishing rods that I enchanted earlier together. This was the final item that I cursed, and I got Law 4, which meant that I could fish way faster. I kind of wanted Luck of the Sea, but let's just say that this turned out pretty well. So now, it was time to go on a fishing trip, so that I could get every item that I needed for the Ocean Stone. I traveled to the end of the lake near my base, shapeshifted into a toad so that I had the luck effect, and then I begun fishing. As a reminder, I need 64 cod, 64 salmon, 16 puffer fish, 16 tropical fish, 8 nautilus shells, and the ocean orb to complete this trade. And after a few catches, I managed to get my first nautilus shell. And then after fishing even more, I managed to get an enchanted book. This was a really lucky catch because it was actually a mending book. I didn't have a mending villager yet, so this would be really good for my sword and armor. Afterwards, I decided that I was going to try and find an ocean so that I could also manually kill some of the fish. And after traveling for a while, I eventually found a warm ocean, which was really good. Before I continued fishing though, I wanted to craft something called a fishing trap. This is crafted using string, wood, and a serrated tooth that I collected earlier from the sea lurker. So all I needed now was some kelp to make the bait item, and then I made the trap. I then manually killed 16 of the tropical fish that I found, traveled to my river, and placed down my fishing trap, and eventually I caught some more nautilus shells, and also another enchanted book with protection 3, riptide, and efficiency. And after finally reaching 64 cod, I decided to collect the rest of my shells by finding drowned zombies around the ocean. First, I found two shipwrecks that both had treasure rooms, so I got a bunch of extra iron and emeralds. And eventually, I found a huge ocean ruins that was filled with drowned. I took out all of the ones that I could see, and since I was a shark, I dealt tons of damage. And in this ruins, there were actually two zombies holding shells, so afterwards I was up to 6. I then found a drowned zombie that was holding a trident, and because of my looting 4, it actually dropped one, which was really lucky. And after swimming through the ocean for an entire night, I found all of the zombies with nautilus shells that I needed. So I decided that now, I was finally prepared to fight the kraken. So I swam back to my base, grabbed both my tridents and a totem, and finally, went back to the abandoned ship where I found the kraken once again. I started by throwing my trident as many times as I could, but it swam towards me and started attacking immediately. I went in for some hits with my sword, but it launched me into the air and gave the nausea effect. While I was falling back down, I threw my trident to deal some extra damage, but I was already getting quite low, even with this much armor. It kept getting thrown into the air, but I tried my best to keep dealing damage. But eventually, after losing a ton of hunger and getting quite low, I finally ate my god apple and immediately rushed in to take advantage of my extra health. I tried to do as much damage as possible and eventually decided to switch to the tiger shapeshift. This meant I had no attack cooldown and let me do a ton of damage. And even though it was less tanky like this, I actually started shredding its health. I kept eating as much food as I could while in the air, and eventually, after getting a ton of hits with my netherite sword, I finally killed the second boss of this video, the Kraken. It actually dropped an enchanted shield that lowers my attack speed but gives a ton of protection, so I kept this for the future bosses. I tried testing it on a mammoth, but it kinda just ignored me, so I headed back to the wizard tower, killed the rest of the salmon that I needed in a nearby river, and then traded for the ocean stone and combined it with my wand. This means I'd now unlocked another group of brand new aquatic shapeshifts. The first was the orca, which lets me leap extremely high out of the ocean, dash while underwater, and swim extremely fast. Number two was the tortoise, which lets me store up to nine items in my shell, break stone with my fists, and breathe underwater as well as on land. Number three was the blobfish, which lets me bounce on every block as if it's slime, and breathe underwater. Number four was the platypus, which gives me the luck effect, lets me swim fast, and also lets me breathe both underwater and on land. Number 5 was the harp seal, which can swim extremely fast and make funny sounds. And number 6 was the sea dragon, which can shoot dragon's breath, leap out of the water, and deal extra damage underwater. So, I transformed into a tortoise, then spoke to the cave wizard, and found out that the cave stone trade requires 32 diamonds, 64 emeralds, 10 lapis blocks, 64 iron ingots, and cave orb for the cave stone. The cave orb is obtained by killing the Night Lich, a powerful undead wizard. Find him by killing undead mobs for the rare soul star items and throw them to locate his tower. And defeat him. You will obtain the orb that is needed for the goblin, giant rat, enderman, dire 
Bat, Spider, and Tropical Slime Shapeshifts. Also, if you want to play with this mod, my Patreon has just released, which means every single plugin and mod that I've used in my videos is available now on my brand new Patreon. So if you want to try out the challenges in my videos for yourself, then click on the link down below and join. Anyway, let's continue. So, my plan was to use my brand new aquatic shapeshifts to cave underwater and also search for shipwrecks. I traveled back towards the warm ocean and found a horned sheep, which was pretty cool. And eventually, I reached the ocean and transformed into an orca. I used its ability to leap out of the water and I went pretty high and then turned into a sea dragon, which looked so cool. I then found a swamp and got attacked by archers, so I decided to test my new dragon's breath ability and killed them insanely fast. Next, I decided that I was going to use my fortune 4 pickaxe to begin the mining. And almost immediately, I found some diamonds, but unfortunately, it was only a one vein. Shortly after though, I found a five vein of diamonds, which ended up bringing me to 22. I then caved for a bit longer and ended up mining all of the lapis and iron that I needed. But then I came up with a really cool idea. I decided that I was going to get the rest of my diamonds, gold, and emeralds from end cities. I could also get an elytra by doing this and become a flying gorilla. The stronghold was really near my base, so I headed towards it and came up with a slightly interesting method of traveling where I leaped as an orca, then used the B shapeshift to float down. I then found the entrance to the stronghold and used the toad shapeshift to jump down. I located the portal room, re-entered the end, and finally went through the end gateway. I spawned on a small remote island and started speed bridging towards the main island until I ran out of blocks. Looking back, this was slightly risky, but I just had to impress you guys, okay? Next, I shapeshifted into a bee and begun floating down, and I accidentally looked at a ton of endermen. This was quite dangerous since my shapeshift only had five hearts. I got out my enchanted shield and used it to block a ton of the damage, but I had to get out my totem just in case. I then quickly changed my shapeshift into a tiger, and using its attack speed, I took out all of the endermen pretty quickly. Then after running for a while, I noticed a giant structure in the sky, and when I got closer, I found the grand wizard waiting below. Hello again, traveler. I'm here to warn you about the structure behind me. This is the Obsidolith, and you're going to need much more powerful shapeshifts to survive inside. Come back when you have collected all four of the stones. So I took note of the location of this tower and decided to come back around day 95. But then, right next to the tower, there was actually an end city, which was exactly what I was looking for. I started by taking out the shulkers at the entrance of the end city and got a couple of shulker shells because of my looting four, and eventually found my first end city chest, which had some diamond armor, an iron pickaxe, and a pretty good sword. This end city was quite small though, so to get more gear and materials, I would have to find another one. So I explored the outer end islands until I eventually found an end ship floating in the sky. This meant I'd found a much bigger end city, but since I didn't have any blocks, I had to use my shapeshift ability and then pearl clutch just to reach the ship, but luckily it just about worked and I got inside. The first chest had a bunch of gold and iron, as well as an efficiency 5 pickaxe. The second had some armor, as well as diamonds, so I was getting even closer to the trade. I then collected the elytra and looted the final chests for a bunch of iron and gold. And using this elytra, I could not only fly to find another end city, but I also found out that I can use my abilities while flying to go insanely fast. So I flew until I found my third end city and combined my tiger ability with my elytra to immediately reach a chest room. This chest had six diamonds, which brought me all the way to 30. I also got four in the next chest and protection for mending diamond leggings. So I took those with me and lastly collected my second elytra from the end so, now I finally had all of the materials that I needed from the end. The final two steps in getting the cave orb were to farm for another stack of emeralds and then kill the night lich. So I headed back to the end gateway and returned to my base. The next morning, I turned into a wheat golem and begun farming until I had six stacks of potatoes and carrots. And eventually, I had all of the crops that I needed. So I headed towards the villager market that was next to my base, placed down some composters, and traded for half a stack of emeralds. In total now, I had 45 emeralds, so I only needed 19 more. And since I had my elytra now, I decided to look for some structures to find the final few emeralds. So I scouted the forests as a flying gorilla and eventually found a villager tower which had some chests with apples, potatoes, and bread. But still, unfortunately, no emeralds. I then found a tavern in a birch forest that had a chest with an emerald and some meat. I decided to spend the night here since the sun was going down and it had a pretty cool looking bedroom. The next morning, I decided to scout the ocean as a flying orca. I actually started drowning because I was flying for way too long, but when I went back
back into the water, I found a pillage of factor restructure. This was quite dangerous, but I had a feeling that I would be able to get some emeralds inside. I flew to the top, took out some pillagers, and immediately found a chest with eight emeralds, eight diamonds, and some iron. I then had to take out a ton of pillagers who were waiting behind the door, and found another emerald inside of a chest. I then released the iron golem that was trapped so that it could take out some of the pillagers for me. I also heard some spiders behind a wall, and found a cellar area with another eight emeralds, and also seven diamonds in this final chest. My way back to my base, I found a shipwreck which gave me the final few emeralds that I needed. Now the only item that I had left to collect was the cave orb, so I had to begin by killing undead mobs until I got an extremely rare drop called a soul star. This could be used to locate the lich tower, just like an eye of locates a stronghold. When I got back to my base, it was night time, so I started grinding the undead mobs. And then, just before the sun rose, I killed a skeleton and saw some particles. This took a very long time, but it did indeed drop a soul star. So I threw the star and begun making my way to the lich tower. I flew at full speed until I eventually found a snow plains biome, and this is the exact biome where the tower spawns, so I was looking around quite carefully. I noticed an igloo and made my way towards it, but when I got closer, I could finally see the tower in the distance. I went to the bottom of the igloo and grabbed the weakness potion as well as the golden apple, then made my way back up and finally entered the lich tower. I was being quite cautious in case the lich sneak attacked me, but I still couldn't see any boss bars on my screen, so I looted the chest in front of me and then found a basement area that had an armored skeleton spawner. I broke the chest below the spawner and then went to the top floor of the tower, and then noticed some chiseled stone pedestals. These had a star-shaped slot in them and the same particles that came from the soul star, so I assumed that I still needed three more soul stars in total to be able to summon the lich. So I went to the village and grabbed some extra food, and then begun killing the skeletons at the bottom of the tower. I spent a very long time doing this, and eventually I got my second soul star. I ended up filling an entire shulker box with enchanted chain armor from these skeletons, and also ended up getting a ton of XP from this too. The third soul star took a very long time to get, but the fourth came quite quickly, and it happened while I was killing four skeletons at the same time for some reason. Anyway, I was now ready to summon the night lich. I made my way to the top of the tower, broke the mob spawner, and then placed all four of the soul stars in their pet. Pedestals. Immediately, it turned to night, but I couldn't see the night lich yet. I looked around the tower, and out of the corner of my vision, I saw it fly past me. I wanted to attack it immediately, so I equipped my elytra, and used my gorilla shapeshift to launch myself towards it. I managed to get a couple of hits while dodging the lich's fireballs, but on the ground, I was swarmed by stray skeletons, which I had to take out using the tiger shapeshift. I then used fireworks to launch myself towards the lich, I managed to get a couple more really good hits. When I was in the forest, it started spawning a ton of phantoms as well as directly hitting me with fireballs. This ended up getting me to 4 hearts, so I re-equipped my chest plate, took out my totem, and eventually managed to regenerate. This time, I wasn't going to let the lich spawn more phantoms, so I put my elytra back on and launched myself at the lich over and over. I repeated this until I eventually got the final hit. This boss dropped a huge amount of XP, taking me all the way to 54 levels. He also dropped some diamonds, books, and a custom item called Ancient Anima, but most importantly, the cave orb. So I made my way back to my base, repaired my elytra using phantom membrane, grabbed the shapeshifter upgrade table, and then traded my diamonds, emeralds, lapis, iron, and cave stone for the cave orb. Then combined it with my wand. This meant three out of four of the stones are now collected, so my wand was looking pretty cool. This stone unlocks six brand new cave themed shapeshifts. The first is the goblin. This shapeshift gives you permanent haste too, lets you mine from further away, and makes you strong enough to break stone with your fist. Number two is the giant rat. This gives the luck 3 potion effect permanently, making chest and fishing loot insanely powerful, and it also gives permanent speed 1. Number 3 is the diabat, which lets me fly for a short period of time, however, I burn in sunlight. Number 4 is the enderman, which lets me throw enderpearls whenever I want without taking damage, gives extra reach, but I take damage when in contact with water. Number 5 is the spider, which lets me launch cobwebs at enemies, scale walls, and makes me immune to poison. And lastly, number 6 is the tropical slime. This lets me bounce on any block as if it was a slime block, lets me summon a slime minion to fight for me, and lets me breathe underwater. I then spoke to the lava wizard to find out which items that I needed to trade for the final stone, and it required 8 netherite scraps, 64 magma blocks, 64 obsidian, 16 gold blocks, and the lava orb. The lava orb is obtained by killing the nether gauntlet boss. It can be found in a nearby dungeon in the nether dimension. Defeat it to get the orb that is needed for the necromancer. Piglin Druid. Magma Cube, Strider Brute, Blaze Guardian, and Wither Shapeshifts. 
Since the gauntlet seemed like the most dangerous boss, I decided that I was going to slightly improve my gear before fighting it. I also wanted to make a really strong efficiency 6 netherite pickaxe, so that I could use the goblin shapeshift to instamine stone and netherrack and get tons of materials. So, it was finally time to make my way back to the villager market and reset a librarian until I can get a mending book. I tried out my brand new diabat shapeshift and flew out of the wizard tower, but immediately started burning, which made me realize that this shapeshift wasn't quite as OP as I thought, so I decided to use my tropical slime shapeshift to bounce towards my base, until eventually it became nighttime and I flew over to the villager market. I switched into an enderman and pulled in, and rounded up four villagers into boats so that I could keep resetting their trades without them getting away, and after resetting villagers for an entire day, one finally offered me a mending book. But it was for a huge price of 36 emeralds, and after the cavestone trade I had barely any left, so I had to figure out a method of getting over two stacks of emeralds as quickly as possible. But then, after brain storming for a while, I remembered that I could use the goblin shapeshift to get permanent haste 2, and if I combined that with an efficiency 6 gold axe from my cursed enchantment table, I could then insta-break logs and sell the emeralds to Fletcher villagers. So I ran to my enchantment room and started by enchanting some gold axes. The first one got on breaking 3, but the next two got on breaking 3 and efficiency 4, so I combined one of them with the mending book that I caught while fishing, and then made the ultimate gold axe with efficiency 5 on breaking 3 and mending. The final step was to curse the axe and hope that I would get another efficiency level, and I actually did. This was really good since I didn't have enough levels to retry. I also got Curse of Vanishing, which is the best curse that I could have gotten, and lastly, went outside and started breaking trees insanely quickly. I decided to do this near the mansion since anytime I get low on durability, I could just kill some mobs with the axe in my offhand and instantly regenerate all of the durability. Then, I continued breaking logs until my shulker box was filled with around 1000 dark oak logs. Next, I transformed the other villagers that I trapped in boats into Fletchers and traded with all of them for emeralds until they were out of stock, then broke even more trees during the days while they restocked and repeated until I had 5 mending books in total. Next, I created my ultimate set of diamond armor that had full protection 4 and breaking 3 and mending. To enchant the boots, I had to take a trip to the nether and mine a ton of quartz, but afterwards I was finally ready to begin mining for netherite and fight the gauntlet boss, so I begun insta-breaking netherrack while at Y15 while in my creeper shapeshift, and every 10 seconds, I could use my explosion ability to blast mine even more netherrack near me. Eventually, I stripped mine directly to my first vein of debris and found 3 in total, and when using my explosion later on, I found another piece of debris, bringing me all the way to 4 pieces in total. This is enough to craft a netherite ingot, so I went back to my base and begun making the god pickaxe. It would have to be brand new, since I wanted efficiency 6, and my current one was already cursed with fortune 4, so I flew to a nearby mountain and begun grinding mobs. Eventually, I reached 28 levels and decided that I was going to look for a structure since I needed 33 in total to enchant two pickaxes. And while I was flying over the Dark Oak Forest, I found something I didn't expect. It was a pirate ship. In the first 100 days, I found one of these, and it was filled with pirate skeletons that were perfect for getting XP. So I killed the mobs in the bottom decks, and broke spawners until I reached 34 levels. I then went back to my base, crafted two pickaxes, enchanted them, and then combined them with a mending book to make a completely maxed out diamond pickaxe. I named this the Goblin Giga Drill. It's a pretty epic name, I know. The final step was to put it in the cursed enchantment table, and hope that I get efficiency 6. But unfortunately, I got on breaking 4, which was so unlucky. I needed efficiency 6 since I wanted to insta-break stone once my pickaxe was netherite, so I begun flying in a different direction to look for another structure with spawners. I found a ruined portal with a villager tower right next to it, so I looted the chest inside, grabbed some XP bottles, and continued traveling. It became daytime as I flew over a desert, and I started burning, so I switched to a gorilla impulsively, and I had to hit an insanely close water bucket while falling. Shapeshifting midair wasn't the best idea I've ever had. While exploring some more, I found a castle in the sky, and remembered that these definitely have spawners inside. So I flew up with my elytra, jumped into the basement, and armored zombies begun spawning. This was insanely good, because I could use a grindstone to unenchant their armor drops for a ton of XP. I also mined the diamonds on the wall, broke the skeleton spawners in the castle walls for some XP, and grinded the armored zombies for a couple of days. And eventually, I finally reached 29 levels, and crafted a grindstone to disenchant the zombie armor. And this brought me all the way to 34 levels, which was insane. Now I could finally try again with two more diamond pickaxes, 
pickaxes, so I enchanted them and combined them with my mending book, and luckily this time, the pickaxe was upgraded to efficiency 6. I then used my smithing table to make it netherite, and finally had my godly pickaxe named Goblin Gigadrill V2. I immediately dug down to Y11 to test if this pickaxe could insta-break stone, and just as I expected, it could. To put this pickaxe to the ultimate test, I wanted to see how many diamonds I could mine in 10 minutes. I was predicting at least a stack, so I started a timer and begun gigadrilling. And I ended up with 110 diamonds, which was insane, especially the two veins next to each other at the end. I decided that later on, I was going to make a huge diamond beacon using this method. But first, I wanted to get the lava stone and full netherite armor, so I dug to a lava pool, made a speedrunner portal, and went back to the nether. As a reminder, the lava stone trade requires 8 netherite scraps, 64 magma blocks, 64 obsidian, and 16 gold blocks. This means I need 24 debris in total to have enough for full netherite armor and the trade, so I dug down to Y15, which is where ancient debris is likely to spawn, shapeshifted into a creeper, and begun collecting debris. I managed to collect 9 in total, before digging into a bastion, which was kind of crazy. Since I was a creeper, the piglins didn't attack me, so I looted a chest, and then got mobbed by 3 angry hoglins. These almost pushed me into lava, but I took them out pretty easily. I looked around and saw that this was a housing bastion, which is really good for getting gold blocks, so I used my speedrunning route to dig into the hidden gold block area and grabbed 9 in total. I then I climbed to the top of the bastion and found two more gold blocks as well as even more obsidian, so I was getting pretty close to the lava stone trade, and afterwards I went back to mining ancient debris. And after mining a couple more pieces, I decided that I was going to look for the gauntlet boss arena since I almost had all of the lava stone items. So I dug back to the surface of the nether, mined some quartz to repair my pickaxe, and in the distance, I saw another bastion. This one had two double chest rooms at the top, which contained a netherite scrap and another piece of debris. By the three block gap between the chests, I could tell that this was another housing bastion, which meant that I could get another 9 gold blocks, but when I was making my way down the stairs, the nether gauntlet boss bar appeared at the top of my screen, and there was a huge hole in the floor, exactly where the gold blocks were meant to be. Clearly, this wasn't a normal bastion, and in the middle of this arena, the nether gauntlet was waiting. I turned into an enderman to use my teleportation and extra reach to help me defeat the boss, then I woke the nether gauntlet by attacking. It flew up into the air and closed into a fist, and charged towards me, exploding to deal a ton of damage. I tried attacking it, but my damage was deflected, and I realized that I could only deal damage to its eye. I then equipped my shield, since I definitely need to defend a lot more against this boss, and used my teleportation to evade a few of its explosions. I then got three really good hits, but afterwards it started shooting a laser from its eye, and this absolutely shredded my health. I was down to eight hearts, and then I got lasered into the ground, leaving me on two, but I just about managed to block up and regenerate. I realized I'd have to do a lot more damage if I wanted to kill this thing, so I switched to my tiger shapeshift and readied my elytra so I could use it to evade attacks. The gauntlet then fired a laser at me and I tried blocking it with my shield, but it shredded the entire thing's durability in a second. When it reached below half health, it started using a new attack that surrounded me with glowing eyes and blinded me, so I hid behind a pillar until it eventually wore off. I got some more hits using the tiger's dash ability and block clutched onto a wall. The gauntlet then blasted me into the roof and ended up getting trapped in the bastion, so I chased it up there and got two more hits on its eye, and then, while I was charging up its laser, I finished it off. When it died, it spawned a ton of ancient debris, and in the middle, there was a chest containing the lava orb and a blazing eye item. It also gave a ton of XP, fully repairing my pickaxe and armor, and I grabbed the rest of the ancient debris, bringing me all the way to 17. I then continued mining for debris, so that I could have enough for armor and the lava stone before leaving the nether, and I ended up getting all the way to 24 pieces in only a few minutes. So finally, my nether trip was complete. I traveled back to my base, smelted all of my ancient debris in a blast, furnace, crafted four netherite ingots, and upgraded all of my armor. I now had almost all of the items that I needed for the lava stone trade, apart from the gold blocks which I only had 15 of, and the stack of obsidian. So, I decided to go on a huge mining trip where I would first of all get the gold, but I also wanted enough diamonds for a tier 2 beacon. This would definitely complete my base, and the potion effects would be pretty useful. So I crafted the beacon using the nether star that I collected in my first 100 days, and I currently had enough diamonds for 20 blocks, but for a tier 2 beacon, I need 34, meaning that I had to mine just under two stacks of diamonds, so I drilled down to Y11 and begun mining.
After I was done, I surfaced, climbed on top of my base, and built a two-layer pyramid out of diamond blocks. Then I placed the beacon and decided to select the resistance effect. I then smelted eight glass and stained it orange and covered the beacon with this orange glass. And this made the light beam match the color of my house, which was pretty cool. Now, all I had to get was a stack of obsidian, so I dug to a Y11 lava pool and broke all of it insanely quickly with my goblin shapeshift and efficiency six pickaxe. And now it was finally time to complete my shapeshifter one by adding the final stone. I spoke to the lava wizard, traded all of the items that I collected, and in return, received the lava orb. This stone unlocks six insanely powerful shapeshifts. Number one is the necromancer, which lets me summon wither puppets that attack my enemies, and I can also shoot barrages of arrows. Number two is the piglin druid, which buffs netherite and gold armor, as well as netherite and gold tools, makes all piglins friendly, and lets you shoot fireballs at enemies. Number three is the strider brute, which makes you stronger and faster than a regular strider, lets you walk on lava, and fire projectiles at enemies. Number 4 is the Blaze Guardian, which is immune to fire, immune to poison, and lets me shoot fireballs. Number 5 is the Magma Cube, which lets me walk on lava, bounce on any block as if it was slime, and makes me immune to fire. And number 6 is the Wither, which lets me fly, shoot Wither Skulls, and inflict the Wither effect when fighting enemies. I used the Wither Shapeshift to fly towards the Stronghold, because it was now time to defeat the final boss, the Obsidolith. I transformed into a magma cube and jumped all the way down to the stronghold staircase, and then tested out my brand new piglin druid shapeshift against some mobs that I found. This was kind of unnecessary since mobs weren't hostile towards me, but it was pretty satisfying to shoot fireballs. I then found the portal room, entered the end, and decided to try out my new necromancer shapeshift against some endermen. So I summoned three wither puppets and punched an enderman, and I just watched as they took it out for me, which was kind of funny. I then turned into an elephant and used its charge ability to attack an enderman, and then it got finished off by my with the puppets. I also wanted to try out the giant rat shapeshift, and remembered that it gave me the luck 3 potion effect, which gives insane chest loot. So I entered the end gateway, and flew a different direction, hoping to find an end city. And quite quickly, I came across one, and used my elytra to become a flying rat. I reached the chest area, and inside there was some iron, gold, basic tools, and a protection for mending chest plate, so I think the luck effect kinda worked. But my gear was already maxed out, so I flew back towards the obsidolith structure, and eventually reached it and flew to the top. There was an obsidian portal frame in the center of the structure, and I remembered that I had some blaze rods in a shulker box, so I crafted some eyes of ender and placed one in the frame. And then, particles begun appearing, and an obsidian pillar rose from the center of the structure, so immediately I begun attacking it. But I was launched into the air, taking away a ton of my health. I healed up and kept attacking, and I realized that I would definitely need my totem if I wanted to stay alive. And a few seconds later, I was hit with a fire attack, activating my enchanted totem. Some small the towers rose around the edges of the structure, and they seemed to be giving the main pillar a shield. So after using my elytra to fly around and heal for a few seconds, I broke all of the pillars, and as I expected, its shield was temporarily taken down. So I got as many melee hits as I could, until I got taken down to half a heart and retreated using my elytra to heal. I was really close to beating the boss, so I had to go even more aggressive. I got some more hits on the middle pillar, and started using my trident for some ranged attacks, until its shield reactivated, and I had to break all of the pillars again. Since I didn't have a totem now, I knew that I had to take it out as quickly as possible. So while it was charging up another attack that probably would have killed me, I got the final few hits and defeated the Obsidolith. Afterwards, a huge obsidian tower started rising out of the ground, and when I climbed to the top, I found an extremely strange looking end portal and a shulker box in the middle. Inside of it, there was a bunch of end city loot which I took with me, and then I jumped into the end portal, but I didn't get taken back to the overworld. I was in a brand new version of the end dimension, and all of my items had disappeared. It looked like this is where my next 100 day video is going to begin. And again, huge thank you to Monster Legends for sponsoring this video. Don't forget to claim your free reward by clicking the link in the description before September 26th. Anyway, that's all for today. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you all later. Peace.